Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Assalamu Alaikum. Today uh, we will discuss lecture number 30, and in this lecture we will discuss the topic that is higher level language interface. Uh, in this topic we will discuss how we can use assembly language inside the higher level languages. Before going to discuss uh, this lecture, we will review what we did in our previous lecture. In our previous lecture, uh, we discussed something about the uh, Win32 APIs, uh, Win32 API functions that we used to create, read, and write inside the files. Uh, here is one example how we can create a file. So when we create a file, definitely uh, we need handlers, and we already know that we need handle. We need handle. This handle is used. Uh, first, we need a handle. This handle will be used further to read, write, or uh, perform any other operation on a file. So, when we create a file, and there are different options that we can see here. So, this create file prototype, there is a file name. Uh, this is a pointer, or uh, this will uh, this will indicate that what file name you are going to create, then access uh, desired access or read, write, and so on. Share mode is about the write, access, delete, and so on. Then there are security options, then creation disposition, and then the flags and attributes, and this template if you want to use attributes from the other file. So this whole prototype will give us the handle, and this handle we are going to store in somewhere in a variable, and that variable will be used uh, when we read file, when we write file, or when we do other operations on a file. Similarly, after that, uh, we perform some console window manipulation functions. Uh, we had go, gone through all these. So, how we can set a uh, screen buffer, like whole screen size or any any portion inside the screen. Then, how we can set some parameters about the console window, and then how can we set the cursor position? Uh, means how we can control the cursor by setting its position, color, intensity, and so on, the size, and so on. Then uh, the text, whatsoever the text we are going to print on the console window, so how can we set its color, and so on, and the uh, location, and so on. After that, there were other functions, like the time uh, and date functions. These functions were dealing with this time and date, and then we saw that there is a system time structure, this structure was used to get information of, of the system date and time. Then we have the function like get local time and set local time. Then get tick count and get sleep. Uh, then we have the sleep function. And then get date and time both also. And then in the end, we also discuss about the uh, graphical window functions. Uh, the functions that are used to draw the graphical windows and just like one of the message box window we can print out the message box window there's ok button cancel button and so on then we have message uh, we have caption here for this one a window and there are minimize maximize and the close button and so on and maximize and restore then we have some options here if you want to print any text a message box function then we have main window and main window win main procedure. Uh, we, have, we have used to create a main window and so on. There were other structures uh, that we also use. Point structure, uh, to, uh, point, uh, it has two members, X and Y and so on. Then rectangle was, then we have the upper coordinate and the left, uh, lower coordinate and so on. Lower corner and upper corner locations uh, about the rectangle means how we can select this one. Then we have the message structure. This message structure was used how a system or a kernel send messages to the application and so on. So we need message structure from system towards the application and we could use this uh, uh, message structure to send information inside the windows. So windows or application get this information through this structure and we can do or the program will perform action based on this structure and so on. Then we have the Windows class structure also there. So this is the uh, very brief uh, introduction or the review uh, what we did in our previous lecture. Now what we are going to do in this lecture, 
uh, here is the outline. So in this lecture mainly we will focus uh, how we can use assembly language inside the high level languages. So mainly in high level language uh, we will choose C or C++. Uh, right now we are using the visual, uh, visual C++. So in this lecture, during this lecture we will use the uh, visual C++ and also during this visual C uh, we will use the same examples that you can use you can also use in C or C++ so on so in this um, in this lecture we will cover that why we need to link assembly uh, and the high level programs uh, high level language programs so what is the need then there are general and the uh, calling conventions uh, we will discuss then how we can define the external identifiers and then we will review again the model directive as we know that we have previously we have multiple times reviewed this model directive now in this lecture we will review this model directive in perspective of uh, the language specifiers uh, how we can use std call or what's the relationship between std call and c and so on and uh, when we use c language specifier or std call then can we integrate assembly with the high level language or not then after that there are inline assembly code uh, how we can use inline assembly code inside the main program for example we have a uh, void main program as if you recall if you have gone through the C++ or C program then we have void main or integer main and so on the main function and then we have this main body of the program and we have return zero and so on whatsoever so here we can use our normal assembly program assembly or normal C++ or C code however inside C code C code we can use inline assembly code here uh, somewhere wherever you can use uh, we can call functions in assemb uh, which are written in assembly language inside the C or C++ we can call them so we can use a uh, double underscore there are two underscore signs here one and two and then there is as ASM directive uh, what is the purpose of using this ASM directive and there are two things uh, one thing is what you can do and what you cannot do when you are using when you are going to uh, integrate assembly inside the uh, high level languages then we have the examples how we can use registers and then we have example how we can encrypt uh, how we can use encryption uh, example how we can use encryption uh, uh, whole file means for example we have text file we will encrypt whole text file and then we will save it inside the uh, new file and so on so first question is why we need to link assembly and the high level language programs so we know that we use high level language for overall project development means as the uh, it, it's provide the convention or the ease, ease uh, to the programmer uh, that we don't care a programmer doesn't care about the low-level details what is the hardware so we just write the uh, large program in a very small time very short time and programmer doesn't know what are the low-level de details and so on however in this high-level language uh, when we create projects or when we write programs they are slow in speed if we compare to the assembly program because we can optimize programs in assembly language however the size and the speed of this uh, high level language program depends on the compilers or the uh, uh, compilers whatsoever the language you are using compilers or interpreters and so on so on the other hand we use assembly code because uh, assembly code uh, provides a speed up the critical sections of the code and so on and we use assembly to access the non-standard hardware devices uh, which is uh, sometimes very difficult when we're using the high-level language and so on we can use a uh, platform specific code means if you want to write for any platform like some operating systems or maybe the hardware whatsoever you can uh, you have the underlying hardware so you can write uh, code specifically for that hardware also and you can the extend the high-level language capabilities and so on now 
the objective main objective of this uh, lesson and the maybe the uh, next lesson is how we can interface or provide connection between assembly language and high level language programming languages so we will use the inline assembly code in C++ so we will use uh, example of you can we, we will use C or C++ both so in this in this lesson we will do the inline assembly code means whatsoever we will use we will uh, whatsoever assembly code we will use uh, it will be written explicitly inside the program we will not call any other functions maybe in the next coming lecture uh, we will call we will write functions assembly functions and we will call them however before that we will discuss uh, what are the things that we have to be very much careful when we are going to um, use assembly code inside the high level languages now there are some general considerations or conventions that we have to uh, consider before going to write uh, before going to embed or before going to integrate these two uh, languages uh, one is the high level and other one the low level like the assembly language and so on so the general consideration is uh, when calling assembly language procedures from high level languages first uh, does the assembler or uh, first we, we must ask the question that does the assembler or compiler alter the names of identifiers placed in the object files and if so then how because when we uh, call any procedure for example and the procedure name is for example ABC is a procedure name and we have some variables or uh, sorry uh, argument that we are passing and this procedure will receive some parameters and so on so what is the naming convention how this name will be converted uh, when we have the object file and in the next few slides you will see uh, when we use std call inside assembly language and when we will use c directive uh, c language specifier and so on what will be uh, the procedure name and how will it be dealt uh, by the assembly language and how c deal with these uh, uh, procedures and so on and the naming convention and so on so first of all both assembly and the high level language uh, must use the same name naming conventions means naming convention means how uh, mean the rules or the characteristics regarding naming the very name naming of variable or names of variables and also the names of the procedures when we declare or define procedures and when we use uh, when we pass uh, arguments and when the function will receive parameters even then when a function return from uh, when function return to the main program uh, how a stack is going to be managed uh, we already discussed about when we uh, studied the procedures however he will be, we will explicitly see however here we will explicitly see that how these procedures and variables are going to be dealt then the second thing is the memory model uh, this is more important for example when we use std call definitely it is 32 bit and so on uh, we use 386 dot and we use std call uh, generally we are referring to the 32 bit and so on so the memory model that is being used by high level language and the code that you are using in assembly language they must have the um, compatible memory model like if you are using flat and segmented and so on so they must use the same so this is these are the most uh, general considerations or general conventions that we must have to be very much careful when we integrate both assembly and uh, the high level language and the third one the last third and the last one is the they must uh, the assembly and the high level language uh, must use the same calling convention how we use how we call the procedures and so on this is more important so names of the procedures the memory model procedures and variables memory model and the calling convention these are the most uh, uh, important things then what is the calling convention for example it refers to the low level details about how procedures are being called when we refer or when we call a procedure then uh, what should be considered or what should be the consideration uh, when we use the uh, procedures so it identifies 
uh, identify the specific registers that must be preserved by the procedure. So you must identify that uh, either this procedure will preserve any registers or not. For example, what should, what should be the value when we return from the uh, uh, procedure for the stake pointer and so on. Then it determines uh, how arguments are being passed to the procedures like in either in registers, uh, either in the on the stack or in the shared memory. Now uh, we know that uh, in our um, assembly language we did some examples where we pass parameter or pass arguments uh, in, in registers and also uh, in the uh, inside the stack and so on. So it, you must consider all these uh, conventions, uh, calling conventions when you are going to integrate both. And also uh, there should be consider a consideration that they will determine the order in which arguments are being passed by the calling program to the procedure. For example, if we pass arguments like two arguments, argument number A and argument number B, how these arguments are being saved inside the memory or inside the stack or inside the registers from the left to right or right to left and so on. And then it should determine that um, whether arguments are passed by value or by reference and so on. And then the second last one is it should determine how this take pointer is stored after a procedure call as we discussed before. And then in the end uh, it should determine that how functions uh, return uh, values. Uh, this is uh, all these uh, things are related with the calling convention. So we have uh, to consider all these things when we are using the procedures uh, which are written in assembly language and we are calling them inside the uh, C or other high level languages. Then we have external identifiers. For example, uh, when we are calling an assembly language procedure from a program written in another language, then external identifiers must have compatible naming conventions. So name, naming rules must be uh, followed there. And what are these external identifiers? So this external identifier is some nothing but a name that has been placed in a module's objective file. Uh, so this object file uh, is when we create, uh, when we compile, then we have the object file and so on. So in such a way, that, so the name should be placed in the object file in such a way so that uh, the linker can make the name available to the other program modules. So external identifier should be uh, um, considered or uh, their naming convention should be considered well before using them uh, in the high level and when we are going to link both. And the linker, linker will resolve the references to the external ident identifiers. However, uh, can only do if the same naming convention is used in all the programming modules. So naming convention is very much, very much important. Here you will see example, uh, for example, uh, we have a C program is called the main. So you can see we have the main.c or it can be main.c, cpp and so on. And it calls the an external um, procedure is called the RSM. So this is the RSM and the in the object file you will have the uh, RSM is like underscore RSM when we compile this one then we have this RSM. So C compiler automatically preserves the case and appends a leading underscore. So this is after compiling this one. We will have underscore and the name will remain same because name A is capital, here S is capital, so name will remain same. However, here you can see in array.asm file, for example, we have we are using model like flat and instead of std call or other name uh, language specifiers we are using pascal now for the pascal compilers what will happen uh, when we compile the program the object file will have this naming name for the um, procedure called rsm so there is a problem because here we are linking this one and this one so the problem is when we are calling this rsm is calling um, uh, this main.c is calling rsm however uh, in the array.asm uh, the name is uh, for this procedure is really different so we have to be very much careful so c compile automatically preserves the case and appends a leading 
to the actual name so it will change to the underscore rsm and so on now we know that uh, we have used the dot model directive and uh, here is one example so we already use this one std call and std call is a language specifier as we know that uh, and is used when we are calling the uh, ms windows functions so if we are using if we are using ms windows function mostly so when i started this subject then uh, there was one thing in my mind that uh, we have to continue all these topics and in the end we have to do the uh, windows programming uh, and also we have to create windows and so on and windows function we are using the windows apis and so on uh, win api and so on so we are we were continuously using std call and the flat memory model and also we discuss what is flat memory model and so on however uh, now when we are going to interface uh, assembly language with C++ now one thing that we have to be very much careful we will discuss what is different between std call and C almost they are similar however there is some difference uh, there is a very minor difference uh, which matters a lot when we are using or calling functions and so on there is another uh, language specifier that is called the C. So in this uh, chapter or in this lecture, uh, even if you just refer the chapter number 12 of the uh, assembly language programming for x-axis uh, by the Kip R. Irwin, uh, which you will see in the reference in the end of this lecture. So here we will use C language specifier instead of std call. The reason will be in the next slide. So when we are linking the assembly code with C and the C++ program. So re what is the reason here? We know that when we use std call specifier, so it will cause a subroutine uh, arguments to be pushed on the stack in reverse order from last to first. Same thing happens with the uh, when we use uh, C language specifier. How, how does it do? Uh, this std call will push 6 then it will push 5 then it will call the add 2 and when we use the um, uh, std call requires also a constant operand in the return instruction so it will also require the here uh, for example here we use push uh, all these two arguments and these two arguments are being used by using the uh, e ESP is also saved in the EBP and by using the EBP we can refer those uh, two arguments like the first parameter will be referred here second parameter will be referred at this one because second parameter is stored first and then second uh, uh, first parameter is stored for second because second parameter is stored first in the stack and then uh, the second parameter or the first parameter is being stored and so on so we can access them by using the ebp and then after that uh, what we do we perform some operations and, and then we pop EBP because we need the previous value of a stack pointer and then we add uh, it um, to the stack pointer so clean up this stack area. However, and also uh, when we use the std call specifier, it modifies the exported public procedure names by storing them in the following format. For example, when we use the name of the uh, procedure when we comp when we we'll, um, compile that program or when we assemble that program uh, link it then object file will have the name like this one underscore name of the uh, procedure and at the rate of sign and then we have nn here will be the number means in case it will be 8 here you can see so we have the procedure 82 and at the rate of sign so the name placed by the assembler to the linker is uh, the, so the name passed by the assembler to the linker is like underscore add two at the rate of eight. It shows that when we return that this eight will be added inside the uh, stack pointer and then it will do what like clean up the stack area and so on. However, on the other hand, you can see we have the C language specifier. If we use C language specifier, so uh, it requires procedure arguments to be pushed on the uh, stack from last to first. So here both are similar when we uh, uh, use or uh, when we pass arguments. On, however, 
when we are going to remove uh, our arguments from the stack after the procedure is being called. So the language specifier or the C language specifier places responsibility on the caller. So it is the responsibility of the caller to clean up everything. So like the garbage collection and so on. So it should clean the stake area by itself when where we are calling. So in in the calling program, when we use this uh, in C language, so the calling program should do everything like we say add ESP8 and so on, so it will clean up the uh, stack and so on. This is the uh, one difference uh, between the STD call uh, language specifier and the C language specifier. Otherwise, here you can see it is almost similar when we are going to compile and the object program must have like push 6 and we have the push 5 and call it 2 and so on. The second difference is in C language specifier it appends a leading underscore character to the external procedure names like this one and there is no 8 sign and there is no number and so on. So if you recall from the previous slide that this is the same uh, name name uh, naming convention that was uh, shown in the previous slide when we are going to interlink or connect or uh, call the find array or some array uh, or add some or some procedure from the uh, Pascal and the C and so on. So you you have seen that and C plus plus. RC, there was one program in main program main.c, it was calling the add sum or some or array sum, and there was the uh, assembly program which has a procedure uh, add sum or array sum procedure. So, here you can see if you recall, then this one has almost a similar naming convention if we are using the C. What is inline assembly code? So when we directly insert, when we uh, when the assembly language source code that is inserted directly inside the high level language program, that is called the inline uh, assembly code. And the compilers such as like Microsoft Visual C and Borland C++ have the compiler specific directives that identify the inline assembly code. So especially in Microsoft Visual C, or Microsoft Visual C++ and the Borland C++. Both uh, can identify the, both have the uh, compiler specific directives uh, like we will use the underscore ASM, double underscore and so on, we will use ASM. So it will compiler will understand that uh, we have the assembly code inside the high level language and so on. And the efficient inline code uh, executes quickly because uh, call and return instructions are not required here. So if you want to execute, uh, if we want to, uh, if we are not using any procedures, uh, then if you can use directly, uh, use this code inside the uh, main high level language. So it, it will execute more efficiently uh, if instead of calling the procedures and so on. So in this lecture right now we will uh, do some examples where we will uh, use the inline assembly code to perform some operations and so on. Uh, the second thing is uh, simple uh, to code because it's very easy to code because uh, there are no external names. We are not dealing with any external names, memory models or naming conventions involved. So this, these naming conventions, memory models, uh, they are required when we are calling a procedure, when we are calling the assembly procedure uh, in your main program or high level language. It's not portable uh, because it is written in a single platform, so uh, it's, it's not a portable, uh, all these assembly code which you are using uh, in the main program. So we have the underscore ASM directive in the Microsoft Visual C++. Uh, this can be placed at the beginning of a single statement. Here you can see. So this is uh, underscore ASM directive or before this statement. So here it should be the assembly statement which you are using. So we have the assembly statement. Or you can also, uh, or it can mark 
the beginning of a block of the assembly language statement. So here is a complete block from here to here. So you can use this complete block and it will be marked by underscore ASM to show that all these statements are, are the assembly statements. So they can be assembly statements and so on. So in this way you can use the inline assembly inside the Microsoft Visual C++ and so on. There is one thing, the commenting style, how you can comment inside the uh, assembly language uh, as we already use this one, this convention when we were using the uh, inside the assembly language we program when we were programming in inside the uh, assembly uh, however here all these formats uh, all the following command styles are acceptable however the latter two are preferred these two these two are more preferred uh, when you are using uh, inline assembly code and so on now here there are a few things uh, that you can do and after that there will be few things that you cannot do so what things you can do that you can use instruction from the Intel instruction set as we know that we have we have done so many instructions like uh, jump call add and so on all subtract divide multiply and so on all these instructions you can use whatsoever the instruction set uh, Intel instruction set uh, have the complete range you can use you can re use register names as operands if you want to use register name you can use you can refer function parameters by name so this is also possible you can do that and you can reference code labels and variables that were declared outside the assembly block so if you define uh, the code labels and the variables uh, inside the CRC visual C++ uh, outside the block assembly block so you can refer them you can reference that uh, those variables and the code labels and so on you can use num numeric literals uh, that incorporate either assembler style or the C style radix notation so this is also possible you can do that one and the next thing is uh, more important uh, you can use pointer operator in statements how however uh, sometimes we use only PTR and pointer to some uh, variable or something you cannot directly use this one however if you want to use you can use byte pointer and then you have the location and so on so this is the way you can use pointer operator in these in these statements and so on for example increment byte pointer and the ESI so byte it specifies the uh, byte type and the pointer for this uh, address and so on uh, you can use the even and align directives and you can use length type size and other directives uh, in the inline code and so on so there are a few things that you cannot do uh, when you're writing uh, when you are going to integrate the assembly code uh, inside the high-level language you cannot use data definition directives such as DB uh, even though you can use DB inside the assembly language however when you are going to uh, integrate assembly inside the high-level language with the high-level language uh, DB is like same as the byte uh, and then we have the word or a byte these three things are uh, you cannot use when you are going to uh, define the uh, variables and so on so data definition and directives these you cannot use and you cannot use assembler operators such as the uh, operators you cannot use uh, assembler operator operators other than the pointer so be careful uh, and then uh, you cannot use the structure record width and mask directives and mask and so on you cannot use macro directives such as the macro repeat IRC and IRP and so on um, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm not sure you have gone through all these uh, three and so on however we have done macro uh, so you can you cannot use this macro directive uh, when you use the assembly code and uh, reference segments by name you cannot reference segments by name however uh, you can have uh, use the segment register names as operands so these are the things a uh, few things like four or five things maybe there are some others however these things you cannot uh, do 
when you are going to integrate both now one thing uh, as I already told you that we are going to use inline assembly language in this lecture maybe in the next lecture we will do the uh, calling the procedures and so on so right now we will access all those registers so in general you can modify EAX EBX ECX EDX and so on in your inline code because the compiler has uh, doesn't expect uh, these values to be preserved between the statements and so on so uh, you can use them uh, these general purpose registers on the other hand uh, it's um, always save and restore the ESI source index EDI and the base pointer destination index source index and the base pointer registers now here is very simple example uh, if you recall that uh, the um, if you recall the C or C++ uh, mostly uh, this leave this one because this is to avoid the local referencing uh, um, error and so on however if you recall this one iostream.h if we use the C out and C in streams C out and C in uh, input and output streams uh, here uh, one thing uh, instead of using std here you can see the uh, using namespace namespace and std and so on so uh, uses uh, here's one directive if I recall correctly is the uh, uses namespace so uh, here you can see we can uh, if you don't want to use std then we can use the using namespace uh, std and so on so it will be used to uh, directly use c out and so on if you recall that we can define the structures we can define the structures uh, inside the c++ also and the way to define the structures is uh, a struct then we have the name of the structure and this is body of the structure followed by the colon sign or sometimes we declare also here and we have the members of this structure so we have long data type and we have float data types so long is uh, four byte and we have the uh, again second long uh, variable or member is uh, is also four byte then we have float data type and float is also four byte and so on so we have three members of this structure called package and here um, the member names are original origin zip destination zip uh, shipping price and so on so there are three uh, members of this package structure and after that uh, after that we are going to def uh, define multiple other variables here you can see uh, we have character my character boolean data type my boolean we have short is my short and we have integer my integer my long my float my double and my package and so on my long double and then we have long uh, array uh, have with 10 elements and so on so what we are going to do with this example we are trying to access uh, what well, we are trying to use or we are trying to access these uh, variables and see or see their data types and so on whatsoever by using the assembly code so here is the inline assembly code inside this inline, inline assembly code so block is from here to here from here to here is a complete block the inline assembly code so here you can see uh, if we have the my package um, structure variable uh, and then it has one of the um, member that is called the destination zip so I want to transfer whatsoever the value of this destination zip is inside the EAX and then next thing is I can use length my integer length my long array okay so length is used in number of elements uh, inside the uh, array and so on whatsoever after that you can see so all these are being transferred inside the EAX register then we have the type uh, what is the type means 
is, if it is a character, definitely it will return one because type um, directive or type uh, option is used. This type option is used to uh, return the data type in in uh, num in terms of bytes. So if it is like word, it will be two. Uh, it is integer, for example, two or four whatsoever. A uh, short integer is four byte. Short is two byte. Long is four byte, and double is eight byte, and so on. So all these types we are going to uh, assign their values inside the EAX and then you can perform any other operation that you can do. Uh, this example shows that how we can uh, use or call or use those variables which are defined outside the uh, inline block, inline assembly block, and you, we can use, mix up them with the registers and so on. After that here, we are using the size um, uh, directive and the size will give us the, what is the total size, like my long is uh, 4 my package is 12 total in bytes and then my long array is because long is 4 byte as we know that and there are 10 elements of this array so it will give you the uh, length multiply this uh, the type and so on length multiply the type so you will get the size total size and here return 0 will exit from the exit from the program and so on so in this example we have seen that uh, our assembly code or a block of assembly language is used inside the c++ or sorry, sorry the visual c++ uh, then there we have the second example in this example if we just observe that we are going to perform encryption means whatsoever the text file is there and we are going to uh, what we are going to do is we are going to open that file uh, in an input mode and then we are going to read whole data all data inside the buffer from that file and then this program will ask you that you just enter any key from 0 to 255 and so on so it will encrypt whole file and it will save inside another file. If you recall, for example, uh, there are two fstream dot uh, fstream and iostream dot h and so on. So we are using here the using namespace uh, as standard and so on. So there are some comments. Uh, we have used these comments here. And then we are going to define two. Uh, one is constant is integer. Uh, a buffer size is, is, is equal to 200 then character buffer is equal to buffer size so we are going to define a character array for example of 200 uh, elements or 200 characters and then this is the main program so we have the unsigned uh, count variable unsigned so th we will use this one to count the number of characters and unsigned short is the encryption code this is the one byte encryption code so what we will do here uh, we will read the key value or the value that will be used as encryption key inside the encrypt code and we are going to define unsigned character uh, is called the encrypt and correct encryption character is equal to unsigned character we are going to convert this one from unsigned character uh, whatsoever you enter here into the unsigned character uh, into the uh, encrypt character and so on so we are going to convert this one now this will be used to perform exclusive R so it will perform exclusive R with all the characters that you are going to uh, that are present inside the uh, that are present inside the uh, input file now here you can see we are going to uh, open a file it's called the uh, I if stream input if stream dot in file and we have the file name that we are going to open then we are going to open in a, in a binary mode and so on and then we have uh, output our of stream dot out file so uh, we are going to open a file another file is called the out file dot txt and it is also open in a binary mode and so on so this is uh, these two statements are going to be our these two statements are used to open one existing file and then 
uh, create a new file. So what we are going to do, we say C out uh, reading in file.txt and creating the out file.txt and so on. So what will happen until not end of file? So we are going to read. What we are going to read? We are going to read from in file. So here, so here you can see we have two statements. First statement is if stream. This if stream uh, is going to define a pointer, or you can so call, so call the object. This object is called the in file. We are going to if stream is going to use uh, going to be used to open a file. Uh, the name of this file is in file.txt, and it is going to be used uh, open in a binary mode and so on. So this file should exist, and there should be some information inside this file and so on. And then we have the OF stream uh, statement, and this object is called out file that will refer to the uh, new name, a uh, new file name that is called the out file.txt. Now this out file.txt will be created. Uh, this new file will be created on the hard drive or the current location and here you can see the same the this new file is are going um, the same new file is going to be created in also the same binary mode and so on so these two statements are going to open one first statement is going to open a file and the object that will refer to this file is called the in file uh, and the name of the file is in file.txt then the second object is created, uh, which is going to refer to the out file.txt, and this file is going to be create uh, open in an output mode. So we will write data inside that file, and the first file was going to be uh, open in an input mode from where we will read data and so on. And this one is a simple C out or the output stream or C out statement. It will print this message, whatsoever the uh, string is there. This string will be shown that reading in, in file.txt and creating the out file.txt and so on. Next, what will happen? Uh, we have a loop. Uh, this loop will continue from here till uh, at this point. So this loop will continue until and unless we are we are not going to encounter the end of file. Which end of file? In file in file is going to refer the uh, in file.txt so until there is no end of file uh, because here you can see the uh, not so we have not end of file uh, of this in file what we will do we will see in file dot read so we are going to read 200 characters and we uh, all these we are the size of the uh, how, how many number of bytes we are going to read so all this number of bytes will be read inside the buffer and then we are going to say see out uh, means we are going to say count in file dot g count so it will give you the uh, count how many uh, characters are being have been read after that we are going to perform the uh, encryption or the uh, uh, scrambling this all these characters with the character or with the number that we have read from the that we have read from the uh, keyboard uh, which was stored in the encrypt character okay and this was of type short and so on so here we have the total count so here we are using the load effective address ESI and the buffer so whatsoever the buffer uh, is referring to the memory location for example there are 200 characters and so on so 200 bytes there should be a starting address so this is starting address will be stored in the ESI so ECX has the count the total number of characters inside the uh, buffer so if there are possible 50 characters 100 characters 200 characters so count will give you the uh, number whatsoever the number is stored it will be transferred to the ECX and AL will have the uh, character that we are going to perform exclusive R so there will be exclusive R between ESI and the AL and ECX will be used as a counter as we know that loop statement will automatically decrement uh, the ECX and so on and ESI will be uh, exclusive R with the AL so here you can see we are going to refer the 
the value or the address uh, uh, because the address is here so we are going to perform exclusive R with the uh, whatsoever the value is there inside the AL and again that value is being stored at the same location and so on so after performing exclusive R we are going to increment and this loop will continue until the ECX becomes zero so it means whatsoever the number of characters are there like 20 30 40 50 and so on all of them they will be exclusive R with the key the key that we have used so for example if I press the key like uh, 20 and so on it will be converted into the character that will be stored in AL and so on and then it will be exclusive R with the all the characters so whole this whole uh, buffer uh, from here to here this is inline uh, assembly and now we are going to write we are going to write whole buffer inside the out file out file the name of this out file is the uh, out file dot txt and so on we will write it there uh, even though this is not the complete program here you can use close and so on uh, for the uh, in file and out file and so on so here while loop will continue until we are not going to read all information from the in file dot txt and so on and then when there's end of file it will return back to the main program and so on so here in this program this is the assembly code which we are using this will be more faster um, code than the uh, the code that you can write in C++ or C maybe you can uh, see the difference however in this example you can see that we have used assembly code inside the C++ code uh, pro, uh, C++ program a high level language program now we will see those examples uh, in in practice that how we can perform uh, all these things inside the assembly uh, inside the visual C++ and so on so here we are going to open a new project this new project is visual C++ and we are using the Win32 console program for example and the name of uh, we are going to choose a new directory where we will store this one so So, for example, if we use the empty project, for example, here, and it will create a really, uh, there will be no header files, nothing there, nothing else. Uh, this will be a very clean program. So we have uh, this project. Now what we are going to do, we are going to add a new item for example. Uh, this is C++ file, CPP. Its name is uh, lecture 00. So this is CPP file you can see you can include uh, we have IEO stream IEO stream so is the head head file header file and we can say uh, using namespace 
std and so on integer man we have written zero so this is very very basic program we can save uh, maybe here we can use the C out very basic C++ or C, pro, uh, C program inside the assembly language if we just build this one so this is successful if you are going to execute this one so at this point you will see the output inside this one so the first statement that you are going to execute is the hello world and here you saw the the um, output so this is the the main program now whatsoever we are going to do here for example uh, if I want to use if I want to use here the assembly language so dot asm uh, exclusive r eax comma eax so this is one statement that I want to use and then another statement is asm exclusive or ebx comma ebx so there are two statements that I'm using so so it is updated I just run this program here you can see first is the hello world it will print something and then exclusive R EX EBX and then it will return to the main program and so on so here you saw that very simple program uh, which is going to uh, perform all these operations uh, uh, like exclusive R this is only one means line if you want to use the uh, whole code like in the block of inline code then you can use the same one you have to define the block and same thing can be so we can build the solution and then you can execute without any errors so it will clean all these things and so on after that now what we are going to do so we can just save this one and we just file save as um, so we can just save as the one e okay now what we are, I'm going to do I'm going to delete this one we are going to remove and add a new item okay add an, we can add an existing item here inside the okay so if I'm going to open this one so here you can see we have the uh, so this will uh, disable the warnings about the unreferenced local variables if we do not refer any local variables uh, then to so here we have the example program that is called the example lecture 30 example 1 and the previous program we have saved inside the 
लेक्चर थर्ड एग्जाम्पल वन ए डॉट सी पी पी नाउ दिस प्रोग्राम इज सेव इन साइड दी एग्जाम्पल थर्टी लेक्चर थर्टी एग्जाम्पल जीरो जीरो वन डॉट सी पी पी एंड हियर इन दिस कोड वी हैव डिफाइंड द सेम एग्जाम्पल दैट वी हैव शोन इन यूर प्रीवियस स्लाइड्स हियर फर्स्ट इट विल प्रिंट दैट दिस प्रोग्राम जनरेट्स नो आउटपुट एंड देन इट विल शो यू दी uh it will create an structure then after this structure there are different variables that will be created and then we are going to refer all those values or uh, the their length or their type and their size and so on inside the eax register if i just build the solution so it is successful if i just run this program so it will start from this std out and then after std out there are so many uh this structure all this structure has been defined these uh all the variables have been defined so now we can come to the assembly so inside the assembly uh here you can see if i run so it says uh whatever the value is uh, inside the destination and package and dot destination zip my package or de destination zip it will be transferred to the eax and then after that uh i am going to my integer so my integer is the my integer is of type integer so its its length will should be uh one so my integer here you can see my integer here at this point is of type integer length is one so what is the length of an array so there's only one element here in my integer length of an integer uh, length of an array uh, how many elements are there there are 10 elements so length should be 10 and it should be a inside the eax register then type of my character uh, is one so because the character type in type is written in terms of bytes boolean is also one short is two integer is 4 bytes its type is 4 bytes and then long is also 4 bytes float is also 4 bytes my double is 8 bytes and then uh package uh inside the package uh you can see uh here we have package so we have long long and long so four long data types are there four long our uh, variables or uh, members are being used so it should be 12 12 mean c and then my long double is 8 bytes my long array is of type uh, a long so it is 4 bytes now we are going to say size so the size of my long is in terms of bytes is 4 actually it is 4 multiplied by the length so 4 multiplied by 1 is equal to 4 my package is there are three variables and each of them is of type uh, long so it is 12 and long array has 10 elements and 10 elements multiplied by each element size is 4 so it is 40 so it should be 40 and in hexadecimal it should be 28 and then in the end it will return back to the main program and so on so here in this example you have seen that we are going to use uh so for example here we have package so here you can see that we have assigned one value uh the value that has been assigned to the my package dot destination zip is equal to so my package is a is a variable of type my pack uh, of type package structure so i assigned uh first element as uh the name of this first element was destination zip and the value is 2 so what i'm going to do i'm going to assign this value to to my uh, to the register eax and here you can see uh 2 has been assigned to the eax and so on 
So rest of the program is similar. Whatsoever you can do, you can perform all these operations, or uh, the whatsoever you can perform uh, the other operations. However, I will just remove this one and I will open the next program to show you how we can perform these operations, uh, other operation like encrypting and so on. So if I open the example two. Inside example two, you can see we have IO stream, F stream, and name calling convention is this one, and so on. So I just save this one. So this is program. We just build the solution. So this one is successful. Okay, so what we are going to do here, we are we must define one text file. So we must create one text file here. If we just open the so this in file should be. here in the main directory and so this is the text inside the in file dot txt now the same code if we run this one if we run this code it will ask you the key so in key for example if I put 6 or for example 25 if I enter so it will create the out file so you can see inside the out file so this is complete out file for example if I copy this out file and put it inside the in file so I just save and if I run this program again and 25 and if you can see what is inside the out file this is assembly encryption uh, because this is the exclusive R so if you perform exclusive R 25 with this T and H and so on it will give you some other character and then if you want to again exclusive R, it will give you the same the uh, plain text. So this is the phenomenon which is being used uh, in the encryption and so on. However, we are not dealing with the, uh, we are not studying the uh, cryptography or encryption and so on. So here in, you can see we have already discussed this code. So we have buffer size. We are creating buffer or the character array of 200 bytes and so on. Then we have the count total no character number of characters that we are going to uh, read uh, inside the buffer and so on or uh, whatsoever the number of bytes have been read inside the buffer so we are going to enter the encrypt code then we are going to uh, convert into the unsigned character and so on and it will be assigned to the encrypt chr so encrypt code is converted into the encrypt chr uh, unsigned character and so on and then here you can see because here encrypt code is unsigned short it will be converted into the unsigned uh, character and so on we are going to open a file that file name should be in file.txt and then it will create a new file that's called the out file.txt so it will print this message and it will read all this information uh, whatsoever is inside the file if it will say it will create uh, it will read whole file until there is end of file and so on until there is no end of file so it will continuously read and then after that it will read all the number of characters inside the buffer it will count the number of characters uh, it will define that how many characters we are going to read then it is counting the characters inside the um, buffer or uh, in file and so on and then 
it will continue this loop to encrypt the whole file and then it will write something inside the out file and so on. So this is the whole program that will just going to that is going to encrypt uh, open one file and encrypt whole text. So this area from here to here, here you can see this is a complete assembly code which is inside the this is complete assembly code uh, which is written inside the assembly language and rest of the code is in C++ or Visual C and so on. So now we are going to summarize what we did uh, in this lecture. Uh, in this lecture we discussed um, why we, can, we need to link assembly with the high level language programs. Uh, there are what are the general and the calling conventions and then uh, how we can deal with the external identi identifiers and so on. Then we re revisited the model directive. Uh, we closely saw that what is STD call and what is C because in STD call uh, we have the uh, linker generates the because in the STD call when we are going to write. So now we are going to summarize uh, what we did in our uh, uh, in this lecture. So here first we um, discuss that why we need to link assembly language uh, with the high level language programs and so on. Then there were we discuss about the general and naming conventions, how external identifiers are going to be dealt and then model specifier. So if we have the uh, we have the array sum or some other procedures and return is being added with 8 and if, it, if that is so then it will create like uh, array sum at the rate of 8 and so on. So this will be created by if we use std call however uh, in C uh, what will happen uh, so in std call it will clear the um, garbage or what you can call it the it will clear whatsoever is inside the stack. Uh, it will not leave anything. However, in C, it is responsibility of the calling program to clear everything and the naming convention is totally different. If we have the RSM, then it should be array underscore RSM, nothing else. So after that, we have seen uh, inline assembly code, what we can do, what we cannot do, and then we have assembly directive, uh, what we can do or we cannot do uh, the following. Uh, inside we have seen the multiple points that we cannot uh, use the segment registers directly and so on. We can use registers, we cannot use segment registers directly, however we can um, uh, call or use as parameters and so on. What we can do and what we cannot do when we are using the uh, assembly language inside the high level languages. Then we discuss about the register usage, how we can use registers uh, and then we have seen the inline code uh, to use registers and then file encryption example and so on. After that, this is the uh, reference. Uh, most of the slides, almost all of the slides are from this chapter number 12 uh, from the assembly language for Intel based computers. Uh, is the fourth edition. I uh, keep our iron and so on. Uh, the writer is that one. So you can refer this chapter number 12 and uh, this is end of this lecture and inshallah hope to see you in the next lecture with the more discussions. Till then, Allah Hafiz.